Well, it's been a few days. I thought I had a uh, some video when I was first starting to paint this, but <laughs> I uh, I got a little s about a th four second segment, uh, and then uh, when I thought I turned on the recorder, I was turning it off. So I've got I'm gonna get set up to put another coat. This has got is it three or four. It may have four coats of LPU on it now. I want to give it another another coat, uh, and then it'll set for a couple weeks to uh, cure. Uh, it's best to you know let it cure like that for uh, on the LPU so it gets a full hardness, and then uh, that will be good to go. I also made you know I was ruminating on what I was going to do on the end. And I made a nice little wooden plug. I still haven't varnished it yet, but I, well, I took my lathe and it just took me a few minutes to cut it. But I, I still had it set up for uh, with a tube in the end there for the painting. So I, I mis you know, misgaged with my gauge to find out how you know the diameter is to uh, turn down to. So I put a layer of fiberglass uh, around it and wet that out. So now it fits nice and tight, and I'll have to jam it in. So I'll probably uh, put a little bit of gel magic around the edge. You know, and on the inside, and then jam it in and smooth it out with my gloved finger. So that's that part. And uh, a little bit of confession time too. Um, the first coat, I haven't played with LPU for a while, and it gets real runny. And it's okay uh, on flat surfaces to uh, uh, you know put it in your roller pan and. Uh, roll it out and then you know it'll bubble up a little bit and then you tip it out with your, your brush you know to get this nice smooth coat well I was I didn't know how much I was going to need so I mixed up too much even though it was just a little tiny bit in my cup it was still too much for the LPU because it goes a long way so I was stroking let me go down here I was stroking along here and then I rotate but I would have been fine if I would have just wasted the last, last bit, but then I found a way to, because um, what happened was I came back and a little bit later, and it was still kind of tacky, and I put on some more, and I was, the trouble with LPU paints is the, the as it started to set up, walk away, don't do anything more with it, because if you come back with a brush or a roller or whatever, you're just going to disturb the surface and ruin it. So what I came back and did was I saw I had some um, drips, some runs, orange peel along the long ones, because I was painting this way, and so orange peels would come along or vertically on the, well, horizontally now. And um, so I screwed that up. So then I went and brushed out the whole thing. If I'm going to screw up one section, I might as well screw it all up. Uh, so I made it more or less screwed up uniform. So now it actually it kind of looks like a wooden mass. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, not heavily finished down, but uh, the more uh, LPU I put on it, the uh, smoother it got. So, but... This was an experiment from the very beginning, so it uh, doesn't mean that I'll never build another mast and I may do something uh, again later on. I was thinking of a way for those that do not have uh, a sailboard mast, you know, uh, around tapered mast to use as a, a the mandrel. And I was thinking of a way to use some, uh, probably, I don't know if I go two inch, maybe inch and a half PVC pipe. And I got to thinking that there may be a way to put some saw cuts in the end uh, to put a taper in it. And uh, we'll, we may come back to that later on, you know, when I'm <laughs> bored with life and I need something to keep me busy. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some more, uh, a fourth or fifth cup of uh, LPU and put this out, and then I'm going to go mow the lawn. So we'll come back later. Well, I guess I can give you an idea of what I'm doing with the LPU here. I got so sick and tired of when you pour out of a can little tiny bits, because I'm only going to put maybe that much paint in this little cup, uh, that I had a leftover Costco pill bottle, 
And so I took the label off the can and put it on this thing. And I don't know why they don't come out with these plastic bottles. Uh, it should be airproof, so there's no reason to not have that. So first off, I'm going to squirt a little bit of water on the bottom, just, just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch. And then you have, with the LPUs, the System 3s, you got this cross-linker. And you'll put in... about eight, eight drops per ounce, I believe it is. And then mix that up. And then you'll pour your, and let me give this a shake. say it's done and I don't have to take a rag and scrape around the you know in here and you don't have the wasted drip it's like it's like the Dutch boy paints and there's another company too using those uh, plastic bottles with the handle on them and I've been trying to figure out who, who supplies them and I think it might be uh, proprietary between them and another company that the uh, Dutch boy owns on paint. So, and then give this a good stir. I like to mix it for at least a minute. And then usually I'll let it set for uh, a minute or two before I start painting. This is kind of runny, but mystery paint A here is thicker. And you don't have the water to add and you don't have the uh, cross-linker because it's already built into the hardener stuff uh, and it's a much easier I was going to put the last coat uh, with that on but I think I'll just go ahead and use this on this LPU and save that for something else maybe a dagger board or whatever who knows so let me set this let it set and I'll show you how I change my painting when I put the very close coats on I was going like this it's okay for, in the Coast Guard, they told us, you know, we were painting in the old oil-based paint is put it on, take it off. So basically what I've been doing is I'll put it on and then I'll run it because I can twist my mast. I'll go around and then I'll kind of corkscrew it. And I found that that leaves almost no, no sags. Put it on, take it off. Be careful when you're doing this, you're not spraying paint all over the place. And I get no, no saggy runs. Okay, that's enough of that. Well, I got the last coat of paint on. I got just a, maybe that much left in the thing. So what I've been doing is I got, if you're old enough to remember back of a lot of magazines, there was this thing called the Garden Way Cart. We used to sell them in Troy built, you know, and it had the 26 inch uh, heavy duty uh, bicycle tires on it. I believe they were sulky tires. And so um, I've had that thing for since 76. And uh, I found that. Uh, taking my old paint and just paint the plywood inside and out. It's uh, kept it uh, still young. I'm on my second set of tires and tubes now, but it still works. So we'll see you guys later. Uh, probably I'm going to let this set for a day or two and then we'll come back and put the hardware on it, uh, jam the uh, plug on the end because then I don't need it to be supported by the uh, my painting apparatus. And then we'll just park it in the corner and let it set for a couple weeks. Well, that is the weight minus the two RL205s. I thought I had two of them. I had some of the little blocks, but I didn't have the ones with the swivels on them. Uh, they're still on. I used them on the um, uh, aluminum mast, and I forgot. I 
I was confused and I didn't order them when I got some of the stuff for the fiberglass mask. But I won't be using the mask for a while, so uh, uh, it doesn't really matter at the moment. And where the uh, RL318s are, I added some... Uh, it's called gaffer's tape. It's kind of like a heavy-duty friction tape uh, to keep the uh, blocks from pounding on the paint. So, and then I got my little little knobby down here. It's all coated with some marine varnish. I can put all that stuff away now. So, uh, but the only thing I have to do is I have to make up a new yoke. This one here for the two-inch uh, fits fine, as you've seen but this one I'm going to have to make a little bit bigger. I think I can t get another one of these and then reshape it. It's metal under the rubber coating. Uh, so, and they're not that expensive, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, bend it without breaking it. If not, uh, there's some U-bolts and I can get a little lag bolt and weld, the, weld them up on my welder or else have a friend on his TIG or MIG welder uh, do it for me. And then I can dip them and some of that liquid plastic stuff, the handle, uh, plastic handle paint, and then coat them. Uh, or if I make them, I can at least unscrew it from this uh, uh, gaff hole and uh, screw the other one in when I need to change over. So it'll be a while before I get around to uh, flying this mast. Well, the mast is done. And... Uh, <laughs> bang up paint job. I'm just missing the uh, the blocks, the 205s, and uh, a changeover so I can use the uh, the gaff pole, the boom boom. I can use the aluminum boom. I can use right now, but uh, there's been a lot of stuff I've learned. Uh, I've learned to when I'm using LPU paints, paint in a circle, go around, rotate the uh, the mast. Instead of trying to go lengthways on a circle, paint around, uh, reduces the runs to almost nil. Uh, actually, and also, uh, actually, and also, good English. Uh, the uh, LPU paint needs to really uh, be undisturbed for another couple weeks at least another week anyway uh, to harden up and I'm so gonna, when I get down here I'm going to go set it in the sun let it get a little bit of uh, heat build up and uh, so I've been happy uh, one person made a comment about it taking forever uh, but that was uh, a lot of those early videos are for me experimenting to figure out what to do and how to do it and what would work and what would, wouldn't work and now that uh, I've done it once, uh, I could probably have it laid up in one day and probably wet out also. And I would probably change the way, I'd make certain, I'd, I, I like the nylon uh, for wrapping because it absorbed uh, the uh, excess uh, epoxy and gave me a nice finish. Uh, I just, uh, before I did it again, I would take my time and find out where I could find some either 2 inch or 3 inch uh, nylon um, um, decorative tape like you would use in packages or, you know, for girls exploding out of birthday cake, something like that, that big ribbon, uh, which would really work well. And uh, I, I don't know if I would wrap uh, with the 2 inch tape. I may give it one or two, but I think I would use more of, I'd get more of the, uh, the inner, the weaving, uh, tubing from Chuck. And I'd start out with maybe uh, 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 right next to the, uh, the coating on the mast, I'd start out with a, uh, a sleeve on that. And then maybe uh, a wrap or two of the two inch cloth, probably two wraps, one in each direction. And then uh, another sleeve and then maybe another heavier sleeve on the top, use that uh, 15 ounce on top. And then I think that would give me a strong enough uh, section. But I, uh, I didn't get a chance to do it this time, but I wanted to find some, I've, I'd seen some carbon fiber uh, security tape for putting on packages. And I tried to bust them, I mean, it was only a quarter inch wide and I tried to bust it and I couldn't break it. I finally took it down into the shop and tied it around the vise and tied the other end around a big stick 
and tried to pull it and finally I was able to stretch it uh, but you know it was tremendously strong so I was thinking maybe vertical fibers or vertical uh, layers of that maybe around the perimeter of the, of the mast uh, but I don't know I read uh, that uh, carbon fiber and fiberglass uh, don't necessarily mix because of their stretching capabilities uh, their differences so I don't know we'll go out and test this one this one's you know pretty 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 stiff so I'm I'm happy with it. it seems to get harder all the time too just it cures a little more so well I don't know what we're gonna do next but we've had this conclude this whole series on making a uh, fiberglass mask so uh, get out of the sunlight uh, We'll come back on something else. I've got a couple boats I'm designing now, so we'll have a, probably a tank test on maybe the uh, my version of the Mercy Duck Punt, which I'm calling the East Mercy. Uh, there's a West Mercy, uh, but that's usually made out of real heavy stuff. Mine will be my traditional uh, stitching glue, and I may make one myself, but I'll make it out of uh, uh, maybe a combination of six and four millimeters to get the uh, the weight down. And I also want to make an anima, anima, an outrigger for the electric motorcraft. So that might be the next thing we do too. So until, see you again.